Welcome to the Homeschool High School podcast, brought to you by Seven Sisters Homeschool.com and the Ultimate Homeschool Podcast Network. I'm Vicki, and I am all on my own today to talk to you. And I've kind of got my counselor hat on um, because I know in talking to young people that I work with in my counseling world and parents too, um, that in our world of current events, times can really get people stressed out and anxious and worried. And then it's sometimes hard to be wise and maintain a Christ-like character. And so, you know, we, we want to do that. We want to be wise. We want to maintain a Christ-like character and especially to give our teens the tools to do that also. And so let's talk about that today. All right. So, you know, what, what is wisdom? You know, we know that wisdom is the knowledge of God, right? And uh, we know that it comes from, you know, God himself, from studying scripture, um, from learning, Okay. All right. And so we want to, to learn all we can about being wise and to, to maintain that Christ-like character. So how do we know if we're maintaining a Christ-like character? So let's just jump on that right at first, because our world is was really, really at times looking to make us angry and uh, to, to get us to behave in ways that we go like, is what would Jesus do? Probably not this. All right. So how do we know? All right. We know by the fruit of the spirit, right? Galatians chapter five, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, and self-control. So if we are, are having that come out of our spirit and out of our mouths and, and teaching our teens about that, then we can go through troubling times in a way that keeps us in line with God and maybe even might lead people to Christ who watch us during these troubling times. Okay. All right. So, you know, the, the world is full of stressful events. That's real. And uh, we want to make sure that we are handling things the best we can. So let me give you some steps that you can work with with your teens. All right. So the first thing, first thing we want to do is to teach teens and to model this ourselves, that God has already given us some instructions on how to handle stressful times in the world. And uh, my two favorite ones are one from the Old Testament, one from the New Testament. You know, and you've known me for a while. Uh, you know that these are kind of my foundational scriptures here. Uh, so the first one from the Old Testament, we have 2 Chronicles seven fourteen which says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. Will heal their land. So this is a promise that God gave to the Israelites back in the day that we can still see happen occasionally as you know, people of faith have periodically humbled themselves and prayed together and sought God's face and turned from their own wicked ways, you know, own meanness, selfishness, crankiness, whatever. All right, then God in those times has heard from heaven and forgiven their sins and for a period of time has healed their land. So you see these great revivals. So if you study, you know, the great revivals. So one of my favorites is in 1904, a revival kind of swept the world and uh, you know, lots of people turning to God and lives being changed and the culture around, you know, having a much more... Um, time of grace. And uh, and what people had done as Christians had gotten together and prayed and sought God's face and done times of repentance. And then, you know, God poured out on, on the lands. So that, that was a beautiful story. That can happen again 
if you talk to your teens about Second Chronicles 7.14 and look up some stories of the old revivals, um, you might find some encouragement. The other one is from the New Testament. It's 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. And so this is right from the words of Paul, and we can take them to heart. I exhort, therefore, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercession, giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. So what, what we are instructed to do here is supplication, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks for all people, for all people, and for kings and all in authority. So you start with, you know, just pray for the world, pray for everybody you know, pray for everybody in leadership, it, anybody in authority, you know, to have a time of prayer um, individually and maybe as a family or teach your teens to do this on their own, to pray for themselves and to pray for everybody they know and especially those in authority, so that they can lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Doesn't that sound good? And so sometimes when we have something to do, we feel better. And especially if we have something to do from scripture, <laughs> you know, like, or you know, this is God's idea. And so it's it's a very helpful thing. Okay, and I believe it's true. All right. Then we can help our teens to be wise and maintain a Christ-like character if they evaluate the news that they see. So, you know, how do they get their news and who is profiting from the news that they see? And so that one, one way to do that is to think about when they watch a, a news channel, um, on social media with, you know, if there's a news story, um, you know, who is behind that? Like who's, who's making money off of your viewer time because news outlets make money off of advertising. Um, social media influencers um, make money off of advertising. <laughs> um, and, and so also, you know, those on social media, it, those who are trying to get your attention, very often with teens, um, they also just like the feeling of power, you know, like I'm getting this attention. And so that it's a kind of profiting that might not be directly money, but it is a, a currency of, of power. All right. So when, when they're evaluating um, their news sources, just to know all news sources, no matter where they're getting from, there's somebody behind it who's making money or getting power off of it and to be wise with that. Okay. All right. And that's just, you know, so if somebody on the news is making them very angry or very scared um, to be aware of that somebody's making money off of that. When we are angry or scared, we tend to keep clicking and watching and watching and watching and getting more and more. And so that's more ads. That's just real life. That is just real life. Like we live in a society where people are making money and, uh, and news is a great way to do it. So just know, you know, like if you're feeling angry or scared, somebody's making money off of those feelings you are, are having. So what can you do when you feel angry or scared um, by something that you see on the news? What can you do? You can go right back to those scriptures. If my people who are called by my name, humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, or praying for all men, especially those in authority, that we can live a quiet and peaceable life. Like the prayer matters. The spirit realm is more powerful and real. God is more powerful and real than the nonsense in the world. Does that make sense? All right. All right. Another thing to do, um, especially if they've been watching, uh, you know, something on social media or the news outlets and they're feeling all kind of ways and they don't know what to do. The first thing to do after praying is to do some deep breathing. Not kidding. 
All right. And that sounds really, really cheesy, but no, it's not. Is when we feel angry or sad or scared, our bodies are being flooded with cortisol, which is a stress hormone. And when that happens, we are getting ready to fight, flight, or freeze. And so if our body's getting ready to fight, flight, or freeze, it doesn't need the logic system. It doesn't need to think clearly. It doesn't need to make rational decisions. It needs to fight, flight, or freeze. All right. Um, so in most cases in our world, we don't need that cortisol in most instances. You know, it would be great if your teen goes out the door and a lion starts chasing them. That would be a great thing. But a lot of times it's just cortisol caused by the news. And so why, why let that fog the body and the brain and get them into this hyper alert mode? Instead, we handle it in the only way to get rid of cortisol, and that's increasing oxygen. So you can do that by deep breathing or by going for a walk or going out, you know, and working out at the gym or if you got some workout stuff at home. Um, so yeah, if you're working your body, you're increasing your oxygen. So, but I'll show you some deep breathing. Okay. All right. It's easy. It's really easy. Just breathe in through your nose, nice and deep. Count to five. Then purse your lips and breathe out slow. Count to seven. that easy. And if you do that about three times, you'll probably notice the difference. I, I will put links to a progressive relaxation exercise that I do every day before I go to sleep because I want to make sure my sleep is undisturbed from the stress of the day. Um, so, and that's where we, I do deep breathing and then tense and relax and breathe through my muscle groups because that cortisol can puddle in the muscles. Um, so it needs the oxygen to make it go away. All right, then another thing they, they can do when they are looking at news or from, you know, from a news source or on social media is to analyze things critically. So a lot of times the, the, the um, news world, whether it's on, on a news source or especially in the social media world, it, it, it's sometimes these days kind of like the Wild West and not everything is factual um, or accurate. And instead it's there to, again, get clicks, get longer views. So to get emotions out of you. Um, and so one of the, the things that I found useful is the news literary news literacy project, sorry, news literacy project, and their, their emails that are called Rumor Guard. And what they do is they will show a, a social media post that has been viral, and um, they will show one that is, a, you know, a genuine good photograph, and then one that has been AI edited or edited in some other way so that it is not showing something that actually happened. Um, and so that's especially on social, it's just the wild west out there. There's not really many guardrails. And so to recognize tools uh, for knowing when somebody's messing with your head, um, and uh, so how they, they give the tools for, you know, analyzing pictures and, and um, social media memes and videos that you may see on the news. One of the things to make sure, you know, that to get you questioning is uh, just to say, am I having a big reaction to that? Am I feeling really angry or really scared? Then you go like, OK, let me check this picture. You know, let me check this video. Okay, so I'll put links in the show notes for those tools. And there's other ones out there. That's just one that I, is available to people in the education field like us, because we're homeschoolers and we're educators, right? All right. And uh, an another thing that is really good for teens to do because they are developing uh, metacognitive skills, they're able to look at things from different angles. Um, and so they get some skills in... Um, in being able to critically analyze uh, what they're hearing. 
and uh, how to talk to people about things is to give them some tools for looking at different perspectives. So one of my favorite tools to get them started um, is to do an apologetics course with them, kind of give them some basics on you know what what uh, what our our faith is, and so Seven Sisters has a free apologetics course. It's from Dr. Gerald Coley, who is our Seven Sister Sabrina and Allison's dad, and uh, he's a professor emeritus at the University of Delaware, and he had just spent his life creating uh, videos and lessons and things helping. Uh, young people to see the world in an apologetically accurate way. And it, they're gentle and interesting and fun. And so if you look uh, under apologetics on the Seven Sisters website, it's a free course. You can download it and uh, it's really useful stuff. So then another tool that is really interesting um, is, is to look at the same topic that's in current events, um, and see what different kinds of news sources are saying, is that helps teens kind of know like what's the other side saying, um, what does a moderate person say, uh, what does my side say, um, and then also um, a, a good source of that kind of information will also say who's behind that news, like who owns this news source. All right, so one of the ones that I have found is called Ground News, G-R-O-U-N-D News, and I'll put links in the show notes to that. And it'll take you know uh, several hot topics of the day, the trending events, and show what different news sources have said about that same thing. And it's really good training for teens to, to go like, oh, that's, hmm, that's what they say. Well, hmm, you know, that's what that news source who's owned by this, you know, person um, is, is putting out. So good practical thinking skills. Okay, all right. Then another really, really practical thing to do if something is going on in the world, a current event, something in the news that has really got your teen concerned um, is after you pray and you get calibrated and you know, a little deep breathing is to, to do something actually practical, like actually do something with that. All right, and so one thing is to write their elected officials, not kidding. Like one of the best life skills a teen can get is how to get on their email and write their elected officials. So some issues are kind of local. And so they can write like their state um, representative or senator or whatever delegate, whatever they call them in each state. Um, and especially in things that are of national or international interest to write their U.S. representative, their U.S. senators, the president, the vice president, you know, anybody, if, you know, if it's an education issue, um, the Department of Education, like you can find all the who's it's um, it just by Googling and you can get links to emailing all of these people. Um, when you email an elected official, they pay attention. And it may say, I'm just a teenager, you know, my, I can't even vote yet. But teenagers probably represent their parents also. And if one person emails, uh, the, the elected official is likely to think, you know, that part, person probably represents 10 or 20 or 50 other people that just um, couldn't get around to writing or afraid to write. Uh, so... Those vote counts. I have talked to staffers, you know, in, in elected officials' offices, and they said there are actually people in the offices who one of their jobs is to count emails. And uh, they, they don't need a long email. They need a sentence or two. This is just what I think about this issue. Um, because you're not a subject matter expert. Now, if you were a subject matter expert, like you were the, you know, Mr. I know everything about this because I'm a, you know, 
professional or a professor or scientist or whatever, um, you could write a long, long email, but you just need to say what you think. You know, this is how I feel about this thing. Uh, and they, they, they count that. And if there's enough people of their constituents that have a feeling about something, it kind of gets bumped up in the attention queue. And so that's something that you can do, really. And then one more thing you can do with your teens, and this is so important, is, you know, in scripture, we are told that we overcome evil with good. We overcome evil with good. And if teens have that tool, they can do so much in life and live so wisely and so Christ-like. So let, let's think about some ways to overcome evil with good. So let's say that they're all anxious or angry or nervous about, you know, a, a current event and they did all the other things and they're still feeling some kind of way. Any good deed is overcoming that evil in some kind of way. If you think in God's economy, God runs the, the, you know, his spiritual economy in a different way than we do. So any good deed counts. But if it's a specific thing that they could do a good deed for, so let's say they were concerned um, about, you know, the, the, the war in Ukraine or homelessness or something, you know, they can send donations to organizations, you know, there are, are um, you know, Christian groups that are still feet on the ground. I'll put a link to, to one in the show notes in, in the Ukraine, that they need food and clothing or financial donations. Um, they could, if they're concerned about homelessness, they could go volunteer at Habitat for Humanity um, or volunteer at an urban ministry of some kind, like in our area, there's Urban Promise. So they're helping a generation of young people to grow up successfully and not end up on the, the homelessness um, you know, issue. So, um, you know, there's always something that, that you can do uh, because any good any good is in some way overcoming evil. Does that make sense? I, I hope that makes sense. So what, what we want is to give teens the tools to stay wise and in Christ-like thinking and behavior, even in stressful times. And then what happens? Then they can become the people who are making a positive influence in the world. They could become culture changers. They could be the leaders of the next generation. So teach them, you know, prayer, teach them um, wisdom in analyzing who's making money off of their big emotions, um, how to look critically at information sources, help them to do practical things like um, right elected officials and overcoming evil with good. And you know what will happen is over time, they will get more comfortable defaulting to calm down, stay clear, stay Christ-like instead of defaulting to anger and fear. Isn't that a cool thing? And so, you know, as parents, y'all can talk about that and, and walk it out together to, to model that Christ-like behavior and wisdom that God has given us. Okay, well, thank you. Um, for for your patience with me and sharing things that really matter to me, you know, watching watching our young people get ready to be the future leaders. Okay, well, this has been the Homeschool High School podcast brought to you by Seven Sisters Homeschool .com and the Ultimate Homeschool Podcast Network. I'm Vicki, and I am glad that you've been with me to get today. And I thank um, Seth Tillman for editing and Richie Soares for transcribing and creating a blog post for us on this episode. And please join the Seven Sisters Homeschool Facebook group because you can ask questions and get wisdom from your seventh sisters. Okay, have a great day. See you next week.